Well, hello, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Uh, today, I am sitting with Corey Anderson. She is our coordinator for behavioral health services here in the Napa School District. And I wanted to come chat with you about one of the questions that we received at our listening session. It was a very good question. And it had to do with some of our uh, support systems that we have in our schools. So uh, before we start getting to that question real quick, Corey, could you tell me uh, what are some of the support systems that we have um, in some of our schools? So currently, we have um, partnered with a lot of different organizations and companies um, and individual entities. Um, we've partnered with the Idaho Food Bank. They provide uh, weekly backpacks for some of our kids in certain schools. We've also partnered with YCAP. Um, they provide services at the elementary level for grades uh, for kids ages up to eight years old. Um, we also have a youth rock advocate for the district um, that mostly services our secondary kids. And then we also have some um, partnerships with Independent and also St. Luke's that provides counseling services for um, a lot of our kids in elementary schools. It, and I want to just send a big, huge thank you to our community because they are, are always looking out for our kids and helping our schools. And so it is great to have those supports in there. So this leads me to the question that was asked the other night at our listening session is if if the recommendations go through and some schools are taken offline, um, will there be a vacuum of services? Will students miss out on receiving those services if they go to other elementary schools? So the services that are currently at um, schools will transfer with them to whatever school that the, that the student is absorbed into, and it could potentially increase um, the services that that they could that they could receive. So, for example, like if kids from Snake and Central are absorbed into a school like like Sherman. Um, they would have access to a counselor um, that is in addition to the school counselor through St. Luke's. So some of those schools that uh, we have in our district, some have additional supports that some of the current schools may not have, and so there's a possibility they could receive further. And in addition to that, we're looking at increasing our, our counseling support services for our schools next year. And, you know, it's sometimes it's easier to think about how many how many counselors we can place in in. 10 or 11 schools as opposed to 14. Mm -hmm. So uh, currently right now, though, uh, we in the plan, I think one of the recommendations was to take Central offline but replace it with the preschool, um, was to take Snake River offline and replace it with gateways. Are there services that will still stay at those areas in the school? Um, like what about the school resource centers and things like that? My understanding is yes. So if there is currently an FCRC, which is our family community resource center at a school like Central, that would continue to stay there and be able to provide access and support to not just to the families that attend that school, but um, in the surrounding community. Yeah. So for example, if a preschool were to go where Central is, it would still have the community resource center available there. And some of those preschool families may be able to access that currently maybe Correct. aren't right now. Well, Corey, thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate you guys uh, listening again. We'll be um, back with some more questions and answers, um, but hope you have a great day.